Chris here with Cospet's latest watch. This one is called the Optimus 2. It is an Android 10 watch that has a lot of features packed into it. So we've got a heart rate monitor, blood oxygen saturation levels can also be monitored with this. It's powered by the Helio P22, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, and it even has a 13 megapixel pop out camera. Inside the box, you'll find our magnetic pogo port charging cable. We have a battery bank with it, a tiny little one here. So this little power bank, it's an additional 1000 milliamp hours. The watch itself has a capacity of 1260 and both of them take around two hours to fully charge. It's just under two hours for the bank here. So this one connects on magnetically to the back of the watch like so. So that's for data transfer and charging. You then find a micro USB to USB cable this is for charging this battery bank, and this one just attaches magnetically too. And they even have a little screwdriver that I was wondering and puzzled first when I saw that, what do we need a screwdriver for? And you'll see why in just a second. The screen here is 1.6 inches. It has a maximum brightness of 450 nits that I've measured with my meter. So it's not too bad, but you can struggle a little bit in direct sunlight with this particular screen. So you can see we've got our step counter here, heart rate monitors showing up. And this is a ceramic they're using just around the outside. That's the only ceramic there. The rest of the build is plastic and TPU for the strap. Now, this strap is rather strong, giving a real good pull on that. And I don't think it's gonna break off quite easily. The weakest spot with these watches, of course, is around here where the straps do connect in. So quick release mechanism there, so you can easily slot them in and out, swap over the strap. Pogo port charging connectors I showed you before. This is our heart rate sensor and also blood oxygen saturation level. Down here is the loud speaker. I'll give you a sample of that later on in this video. And here we have our microphone on the side. So this is where that little screwdriver comes into play. We need it to pry out the SIM tray, which is very difficult without it. You end up breaking your fingernails just trying to get that out. So there that takes a nano SIM here. So 4G support with this with the Helio P22 chipset has four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. So all plastic around here, that material there is plastic, a little bit of glass on the back right there. The buttons are also made out of plastic. And then we have the camera. So it can be pointed out that way and you can flip it around. And this is a 13 megapixel camera and it does have an LED flash with it. The overall build quality is not too bad, but let's have a look at the weight now. To me, it feels quite light. I'm used to a watch that has a titanium frame and strap. And this one you can see here, 81 grams, not too bad. So the screen with this model, 400 by 400 pixels and the brightness, as I said before, it's 450 nits, which is okay. I can still see it in direct sunlight, but it's certainly not the best at such a brightness level. So we do have a music player built into this. We've got storage, of course, so you can load on files. It's got 64 gigabytes in total, four gigabytes of RAM and running Android 10 with this one. Now, performance of the UI, you do find to be very, very good actually on this one. So wherever you go, you can swipe, that's our notifications. And here you'll see that we've got all the different apps here. Once you install those settings, messages, of course, so you can reply to them on the phone itself. It is basically having a smartwatch on your wrist, just like uh, the title of this particular video. Phone there, contacts, heart rate, which I showed you before, sleep, breathing, browser. Now going into the browser, it's quite hard going with such a tiny little screen as you can see. And it's just loading in there. Well, not exactly super fast there. And as that's loading in, because it's got a, quite a few images, you can see the scrolling speed is, it's reasonable, it's decent here, but everything is tiny. Now, when you want to type on that keyboard, for example, I want to go into Google, it's not a bad keyboard making use of just the 1.6 inches of screen space here. However, because it's so tiny, if you have very large fingers, I mean, I don't, but the typing on it, you can see is, it's possible, you just do need a little bit of patience. So I managed to type Google there, okay and hit search on that, or enter should I say, and uh, now that is going to pop up. So everything is very, very small there, and because I have the brightness up so bright at the moment, it does actually come out a lot worse than what it really looks like. But tiny text here, but hey, it's possible and you can do it all on this watch. So getting out of that, there's also Task Manager 2 with this as well, so that's my back key. I just hit this to go back to, to the main menu there with all the different applications. So there's a lot on there, weather of course is there. So just get out of this, oh, it's updating at the moment. 
sorry, I'm using that wrong there. You've got to swipe. You can see we've got gallery, calendar, alarm clock, music, recorder, file manager, weather, fitness, Google Play Store, of course, is there. So you can go into this. You can download various different other apps and you can use them on this. And even Maps. Maps is on board here. Optimization just is basically a task manager. And one of the important ones is the Watch Face Store. They've got their own app store there as well. So you can download here, refresh this, and then download the different watch faces to it. So there's some recommended ones there. And you can just go through that and select the different ones you want. And that will be updated over time there. So let's get out of that, hitting the back key there, App Store, Assistant, Face Unlock, Calendar, and that's it for the apps. And of course, you can install so many more with Google Play Store. So it does have a heart rate monitor, which I am currently testing out, and it takes a little while. So it's already been running now for about 30 seconds. You can see my current heart rate, which is 62 beats per minute there. And it seems accurate enough, comparing this to some of the Honor or the Huawei watches I have, I'm getting a very similar result. And my oxygen saturation level in my blood, it will give me the SpO2. And this will take a little while as well to measure it. And that seems pretty standard. So 97, 98%. The other day it was 99%, which is fine. And then we have our fitness modes here with this. So sports tracking watch, it has the GPS on board. It can, of course, record your heart rate. So there are up to 31 different sports tracking modes that this watch will eventually have. And at the moment, there's not all 31 of them. You can see there's a lot of things, including ping pong ball, basketball, bike riding, outdoor walking, running, that is in there. Now for a sample of the microphone that is built into this watch and the single loudspeaker. Now, voice calls I've noticed with this one, because there's no secondary mic, there's no active noise cancellation won't be the greatest and this is of course the quality you're hearing now through the loudspeaker which is okay considering it is a watch and great that you are able to place calls directly via the watch here you don't need to have your phone and this paired up to it now there are a few other features i can show you so if you hold down on the top button it goes in then to another mode. So you can put the circle screen on this. You can change it over. You can go into a light mode as well. Shut down, reboot, just like you would a phone. And this is where you'll find the mode switch to go into that light mode. Now, recent tasks here, this is how you do the multitasking on this particular watch, which is relatively smooth. It's not actually that bad going through this. You can see you can swap over, go to the different apps that you have open. And if you want to save on the battery life, of course, with this, then you do need to simply just hit there to close everything. You've got things in the background that does end up using a bit of the battery life there too as well. So how long will it go for? So from one to two days is what you'll be able to get out of this Android 10 smartwatch. The watch does support LTE Band 20. Often I've been on it right now where I am. I'm seeing just on 3G, which will happen. So it doesn't quite have the same signal strength that you would find on say a phone and that's probably to do with the antennas and just the size of it being a watch and a little bit smaller here. So with the watch faces of course we can change those and I will show you what is pre-installed here with it. So this is one I do quite like because it's well it's the black and the red theme seems to be quite dominant here with the watch faces but you can download more extra ones through the watch face store that they do have there and this is the one you get of course standard when you pull it out of the box. That one preloaded and all sorts of different ones that can show you many things there. There's even ones that do have a shortcut for the camera. If you use it a lot, then you probably have to go with this one right here. So when you tap in the middle, that then launches the camera. Now here's something that you don't often see and that's been able to record footage here, 1080p video on a watch. Now it's a little hard for me to get myself on this shot because it's on my wrist right now. So. It does take a bit of practice to get yourself in the frame correctly here. It does have autofocus to this 13 megapixel sensor. So here are a couple of samples, just of a few stills that I took. And I think for a watch, you have to remember that this is a watch, not a phone. It's actually not too bad. And the video quality is all right here, but you know, your phone will probably do a better job. However, you can take this and just use it on your wrist, shoot some video if you needed to or even play, say, for example, some WhatsApp video calls or Skype calls using your watch, which is something. Now the watch does have a runtime of one to two days. It depends really on what you're doing with it. 
But there is this, of course, which is the magnetic because it's got the pogo port magnets on it either side. Clips onto the bottom the little power bank here. So that will charge it, not fully charge it because it's a thousand uh, milliamp hours with this one to around 70 80 percent and then you can go again for an additional time there with it if you're going to be carrying that around so it's only using micro usb ports on this i would like to have seen type c i think most people now definitely 2021 would probably have if you're on android that is a type c phone so i hope that they can change that in future models and go with type c there so build quality it's not bad at all yes it is a little bit plasticky uh, the around the outside and it's a bulky watch. We have the ceramic which is around the screen there. The screen brightness is 450 nits and the resolution of 400 times 400 uh, for certain applications. In fact many apps of course is a bit of a compromise so you can fit and run them on this watch but using them on the other hand is a different story. So on-screen keyboard is okay to type with so I would only do basic things like answering just a couple of lines say of WhatsApp messages or text messages can be done on this watch. So you can leave your phone at home, put your SIM card into this and go out and place calls. You can take photos and video from the 13 megapixel camera. I think the quality is, it's okay. You have to factor in that yes, it is a watch. A bit of a gimmick, maybe a little bit of a toy watch, definitely, but it still has a lot of functionality with it, definitely. So the heart rate monitor is on there too. We've got all the different sports modes, GPS on this, and then LTE. So with this particular watch too, what I have noticed is the UI is very, very smooth for a smart watch. Now, most smart watches out there that I've reviewed don't normally, a lot of them, at least earlier versions, don't normally have a frame rate of what this seems to be running in 30 frames per second. And because of the four gigabytes of RAM, the UI does feel quite smooth and fluid, and we do get that additional 64 gigabytes of storage. So you can, with this, you can put your music files on there, for example, and then connect up a Bluetooth headset, and go for a run and, or do other things, whatever, you can connect it up. So really it is, like I said at the start, it is a smartwatch on your wrist here, just like the previous models that I've covered in the channel. So this is Cospets Optimus 2. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do subscribe and like for more up and coming videos from me. Bye for now.